The new Motorola Razr and the Samsung Galaxy Fold are both foldable phones. That is, they have one large uninterrupted screen that bends in half. But when you compare them side by side, they're actually very different. The most obvious thing is the way that these phones fold. The Motorola Razr folds vertically from top to bottom, which creates a short crease in the middle, and the Galaxy Fold opens and closes like a book, which creates a bigger crease going from top to bottom. Now, the shape of these phones also changes how you use them. You've got a tall, narrow 6.2 inch screen on the Razr. You're really going to use that to scroll, and you're going to want to turn the phone into landscape mode when you watch video or look at photos. You just don't really have that other option. Otherwise, your image is going to be way too squat and small. On the Galaxy Fold, however, it's much more square, so you could watch videos in either mode. Of course, it's going to be a little bit more comfortable to turn that phone on its side as well. You also get a larger interior screen at 7.3 inches. However, the Galaxy Fold has this really weird notch that sticks out literally like a sore thumb, and so that will kind of get in the way a little bit uh, with some of what you do, but it won't take up the action of the device. On the Razer, the bezels are much more even all around it, so even though you have actually less screen area to work with, in some ways it feels like you have more usable screen. The outer screens are different too. You've got a 2.7 inch touch screen on the outside of the Motorola Razer that you can access when that phone snaps shut. And on the Galaxy Fold, you've got a 4.6 inch screen on the outside that's also fully touch. One difference though is that you can open up any single Android app on the outside of the Galaxy Fold. When you open up the phone itself, that app triggers and opens up on the interior display. And that's just not so with the Motorola Razr. You can have a shortcut to certain apps, uh, for example, messages or Gmail when you're responding to alerts, um, but you're not really going to sit there and type. The screen is just too small to do that and you can't open up every single app. The whole point of having a foldable phone is to double or even triple your screen real estate while creating a device that small enough to put into your pocket. So the real question is, how easy is it to carry around with you? The Motorola Razr is kind of like a chunky square-ish. It's, it's a rectangle, um, but it's not as oblong, it's not as tall and narrow as the Galaxy Fold is. I could fit it into all of my pockets with ease. It was a little bit of a tighter squeeze on the front right pocket of my jeans, but I would say for most people, it's gonna be really easy just to carry around with you, and that's what Motorola wants. Now, the Galaxy Fold, on the other hand, I think does actually close up into this tall, narrow baton shape that I could very easily fit into my jacket pocket, and of course, I could put it in other pockets. It maybe looked a little bit ridiculous if somebody was seeing this phone towering out of my back pocket, um, but I didn't really have a problem carrying it around. Of course, I use a purse, and so that's a lot easier. Um, but the point of that device isn't to be portable necessarily. It's to give you a really big screen that you can get immersed into. So it just depends on what you want. Do you want a large screen, or do you want something you can carry with you because you miss small phones, and you think today's phones are just too damn big? When you're looking at both phones closed, you'll notice that the Galaxy Fold has an air gap. That means the two sides that fold together don't sit flush one on top of the other. But the Motorola Razr does, and that's because Motorola is using a proprietary hinge system that helps keep the two ends of the phone lying flush. Now, both screens are made from plastic, and plastic just doesn't bend, you know, totally flat. But Motorola has created this sort of interior pocket that helps make this look like a normal phone and less like a beta product. I think this is something that other foldable designs are going to want to mimic going forward, um, but this is something that definitely gives the Razer an edge. Even before it went on sale officially, the Galaxy Fold was in a little bit of trouble with its screen. There were some issues that caused a major delay while Samsung redesigned the phone. It was just too easy to cause damage. That brings up questions about what the durability of the Motorola Razr's display will be. There is a difference, Motorola says, between the two. Since 2011, Motorola has been working on Shatter Shield, which is a technology that creates this hard coat over the delicate plastic display underneath. So Motorola is claiming that their phone is stronger. This is something that we're going to have to test, but it will be very interesting to see how that pans out.
Now it's time to talk about cameras because everybody cares about cameras. I care about cameras and this is one of the biggest differences between the two phones. The Motorola Razr looks positively scant compared to the Galaxy Fold's cameras. You basically have two. You've got a main 16 megapixel camera on the outside of the phone. This is what you use for selfies and also to take pictures of almost literally everything else. There is also a five megapixel camera on the inside of the phone, but you're not supposed to use that for taking selfies. That's really just for video calls or even for starting a video call in an app and then closing the device and continuing the video call on the higher quality 16 megapixel camera on the outside. Other than that, you've got a time of flight sensor, but that's not really something that you're gonna use to take pictures with. It's there to assist with low light photography. So in essence, there's really one main camera. There's no telephoto lens and there's no wide angle lens. Moving over to the Galaxy Fold, there are six cameras there and maybe that's overkill, but what it means is that there's a camera lens available to snap a shot no matter how you're holding the phone. You can take selfies when it's open, selfies when it's closed, and there are three lenses on the back, just like on the Galaxy Note 10 phones and the Galaxy S10. It's got telephoto, it's got wide angle, and I've come to really appreciate both of those lenses. Of course, the main camera quality is the most important, but I really love the drama and the amount of people or landscape that you can put into that wide angle lens. And I would miss it if it weren't on a phone. Battery life is a big deal on any phone because if you're gonna invest money into a product, especially if it's a premium foldable phone, then you're gonna want it to last throughout the day. Both the Motorola Razr and the Galaxy Fold have split batteries. That is, there are two batteries, one on either side of the folding hinge. This helps balance the phone when you're holding it so one side isn't heavier than the other. We've seen a phone that puts all the battery on one side and trust me, it's a complete and total mess. But what that means is that the battery capacity isn't as efficient. So if you have a phone with just one big battery, that's generally gonna last you longer than a phone with the same capacity split into two smaller cells. The Galaxy Fold already has the advantage because it's got 75% more battery capacity than the Motorola Razr. Of course, you have to take a lot of other things into consideration, like the size of the screen that's gonna be drawing down all of the battery reserves, and also how fast the processor is. The Galaxy Fold has both a larger screen and a faster processor. So imagine it's just spinning and spinning and spinning, and it's using those reserves at a faster rate. The Motorola Razr has a comparatively smaller screen, but it also has a more mid-range processor that's going to be using less power. Motorola promises that the Razr is going to give you a full day of battery life, but as always, it's gonna depend what you're doing. If you're streaming video, if you're navigating all day, if you are playing a game that is really resource demanding, then you're gonna see that battery level drop faster and faster. This is gonna be something that we just have to test, but with 75% more battery on the Galaxy Fold, I have a hard time thinking that the Razr is gonna keep up. Of the two devices, the Galaxy Fold is by far the most premium feeling. It's covered in all that glass on the back as opposed to plastic on the back of the Motorola Razr, and that screams luxury. You also have double the internal storage and RAM, and you've got the ability to wirelessly charge another device on the back of the Galaxy Fold. In some countries, it even supports 5G, and the Motorola Razr is 4G only. For most people, that's not gonna be a problem, but if you really wanna be on the cutting edge, then you might want to have that option. I think that would come out in a future iteration. On the other hand, the Motorola Razr definitely gives the impression of being more durable and more of an everyday device with features that you will actually use, especially if you don't often use wireless charging. That plastic backing may not look as sleek, but if you drop the phone on its back, it's probably not gonna crack. Also, Motorola says that it is totally splash proof. It hasn't been tested for water resistance, but there's nano coating on both the outside and the inside of the device. So while I would absolutely take it outside in the rain and not worry about it at all, I would probably not try to purposely drop it in a bucket of water. Then you've got the Galaxy Fold, which comes with a list of care instructions so long that I would be afraid to go outside in a sprinkle. Of course, that's totally okay. I tried it and the phone didn't melt. The one thing that we haven't talked about yet, and this is going to be the most important thing for most people, is the price. At $2,000, specifically $1,980 for the Galaxy Fold, 
that is insane. And this positions it as a phone that most people are not gonna buy unless they wanna be on the absolute cutting edge and show off to everyone that they have this very unique device. $2,000 makes the Razer's $1,500 price tag seem almost palatable and almost reasonable. At this point, let's actually take a step back and compare this $1,500 foldable flip phone, which is essentially what it is, with a $1,000 premium device. And remember that not too long ago, $1,000 was bananas for a phone. Like who would pay a grand for a phone? Well, when you look at the two together, let's say the iPhone 11 Pro, or the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, you've got way more storage, way more cameras, way more RAM, and pretty much every other spec on that device compared to the simple one camera phone. Are you really willing to pay $1,500 for fewer specs and the ability to fold your phone? Maybe that isn't totally fair because we are comparing the Galaxy Fold to the Motorola Razr, and that question just comes down to portability or big screen plus all of the extras. At this point, all we can really do is compare the phone side by side, plus my first impressions of the Motorola Razr. But I already know what I think. I wanna hear what you think. Leave your comments below, and don't forget to check out my first look at the Motorola Razr.